In this video, we'll take a look at the widely used command pattern. Using it, we'll create a simple turn-based game where the player can queue up commands for movement and attack. Then enemies will do the same and once we go to the next round, all of the commands will execute one by one. The main idea of the command pattern is creating commands where each of them acts as a function stored in a variable that can be executed later. This will allow us to create queues of the commands and undo them if we need to. Command pattern can be great for turn-based games and other games where you need to queue up tasks or can be used in applications and software where you want to keep track of the user actions. Let's now take a look at the diagram which will help you to understand the command pattern better and will tell you how to use it in your projects. First element in the diagram is the client which will be telling other scripts to run some of the commands. So in our case, client is the actual user playing the game and pressing the keys which will then tell some other scripts that we want to move or we want to attack some enemies and so on. So the client will be the actual user controlling the player, but the same way it can be some AI that will be then controlling how the enemy should move. Second element is the invoker which will then execute all of the commands. So in our case, the player will be pressing some keys, we will register the inputs in the client, the client will decide whether we should move or not, we will send this information to the invoker where we will store all of the commands and once the user presses the button on the screen to go to the next round, we will execute all of the commands in the invoker. Third element is the command which is just the base class or the interface from which all of the other commands will derive. The fourth one is the concrete command which in our case can be some move command, attack command and all kinds of other commands which will be inheriting from the command class. The last element, so the fifth one, is the receiver, which has some logic inside, and this one will trigger from the command. Let's go through all of this now again. So the client is the player who will be pressing some keys. The client will decide whether we should move or not. If we should move, then it will send this information to the invoker, which will store the command and it will execute it when we want to. When the invoker executes the command, the command will send some information to the receiver, where finally all of the logic will happen. Let's now create new script, player controller, which will act as the client. The player controller will be really simple, it will be just checking for the player inputs, so this is happening in the move function, and at the end, if the input vector is not equal to vector2.0, which means that we are moving, then we will create the command and later execute it in the invoker. And that's it for the player controller. Now let's create the command which will be the base class or interface for all of the other commands. So this is the i command interface using which we'll define all of the commands. So everything that is a command has to inherit from the i command interface. And inside of it we have just the void execute so all of the classes that derive from the i command will need to define how they will be executed. And if you want your system to have the undo functionality, here you can also add the function for the undo. Let's now create some commands that will inherit from this interface, so I will create some move command. All of the commands will be just classic classes, so they won't be placed on any objects, so we can remove the mono behavior and instead inherit from the i command. Now we cannot use any of the unity methods, so let's remove those and we need to implement the interface, so that is the execute method. Later, as using the move command, we'll be triggering some function on the player that will actually move it. Here we need to store some move vector and the way that we can set it is just using a simple constructor. So as we create the command, we'll pass in the move vector and then at some point in the future, as we want to execute the command, we'll just pass in the vector to the player which will then move it. So now we are done with the client, with the command and the concrete command. So we'll go back to the invoker where we'll be storing all of the commands and creating new ones and later executing them as well. So we have the command manager which will act as the invoker so it will be executing all of the commands and it will also be storing them. This will be a classic mono behavior, I will just make it a singleton. I'm using this fancy generic singleton class we made in one of the last tutorials so feel free to check it out but it is just a classic singleton. Inside of here we will want to store all of the commands we have queued up so for this we could use a list of the i command but what works even better is a queue. And queue is really similar to a list, but it just simply allows us to enqueue, so add some elements at the end of the queue or dequeue the elements, 
so remove the first element. Then we also have a simple function which will just add the comment into the queue and a function that will execute all of the comments. So we have a while loop that's going through all of the commands. We just dequeue it. We execute the command. This is the function that each of the commands has. And then I have just added some delay so that all of the commands don't get executed at the same time, but they go one by one. So for this, I have added a variable for how much each command should take and to use the task.delay, so to wait for some time, I needed to add using system.threading.tasks. This is pretty much all the code that we need for the invoker. Now we can go back to the player controller, which is the client, that will then add some command into the invoker. So if the input vector is not equal to vector2.0, so we are moving, I'm just accessing the command manager, getting the instance, because we have made it a singleton, then I'm calling the function add command, and I'm just creating some command, so in here, you can pass really any command you create. Right now we have just one, which is the move command, but later you can really create tons of commands and pass in whichever you like. And because we have made the constructor for the move command that takes in the vector2 as the input vector, we just need to pass it in. Right now we are missing just the last piece of puzzle, which is the receiver, which will have some logic. And when we trigger the command, so in our case, when we run the move command, we want to run some code in the player motor, which will just move it. For now, the player mover is really simple. It is holding just some move speed of the player and it has the one function for the moving, which will just receive the move vector and increase the position by it. But in here, we will have really all of the logic that's related to the movement of the player. So the beautiful thing about the command pattern is that if later you decide that you don't want the player just to teleport to a new position, so maybe you want to add some smoothing, which can be done really well using the do twin package, then in that case, you don't have to be going through a script that is thousand lines long, that is handling all of the stuff related to the player, because later there can be really a ton of stuff that the player has to do. So then if you want to change the logic of the movement, you can just go into this script, which is relatively short, and just edit this one function, and that's it. You don't need to care about the inputs, don't need to care about anything else. Now back to the move command, from this one we want to trigger the function in the player mover, so here we will need to store a reference to it. We are storing the reference to the player mover in the variable. And another great thing about the command pattern is that now we can use the move command for enemies, for players, because the logic is separated, so the player mover can be used on enemies as well on players. In this case I will rather rename it to character mover. Ok, I have renamed the player mover to the character mover, so it makes a bit more sense now. So back to the move command, we have the reference to it, we are passing it to the constructor, so on initialization we can just set it to the variable, and then when we execute the command, we are just calling the move function on the character mover. So now we'll have to go back to the player controller, because here we are creating the move command, and now it also needs a reference to the character mover that we want to move. I added the require component attribute so that now the player controller class also requires to have the character mover on the same object. I'm storing the character mover just in a variable. On start, I'm getting it from this object because we know that it will be on it. And then down as we are creating the command, I'm also passing in the character mover. So now if we go through it again, the player controller will register the inputs. It will create the command in the invoker with all of the data that we need. The invoker will just store it in a list of all of the commands and once we want to invoke them, we will run this function, which then will go to the commands that we have. So in this case, it will go into the move command. And here, if we execute it, it will take all of the data that we have and it will pass it back to the character mover where it will do some of the movement logic and so on. We need some way to test this. So back in the command manager, I will just add a button that will then trigger the execute commands function. So we have a reference to the button and on enable I'm just adding a listener so that it triggers the execute commands function. So back in Unity I have just an empty object on which I will add the command manager that we have here. I will set the reference to the button so that's under the canvas and we have the next round button. Now I will add the character mover and the player controller scripts to the player and that should be it. So let's now see. So I will try pressing some keys on my keyboard. I will press W once, then A, A again, and S. 
and as you press the button next round the invoker so the command manager will execute all of the commands so right now we have just move commands which then will do some logic that is in the player and that is the character mover so let's try it hit next round yeah player has moved up left left and down exactly the way that i have pressed the keys we can try once more so i will do s d s a a next round yeah and it's doing exactly what i did even though this works you may say that we have written really a large amount of code just to make this simple movement functionality so let's try adding another command this will be for attacking here you have the attack command script which is again inheriting from the i command as all of the other commands and in this one we just need a reference to the script in which we want to do the attack logic so i call this one just a character attack again i'm setting it in the constructor and then executing some function in the execute method let's now create the receiver so where all of the logic will be happening so we have the simple character attack script which will work for the player for the enemies and for anyone let's now go to the client so the player controller where we will just check for the mouse inputs all of the client has to do is just to check for the input of the mouse button so i'm doing this in the attack function which is being run in update if you are pressing it i'm just adding the command so right now it is an attack command and i'm passing in the character attack script which again i have made a variable for but that should be it for the attack command so let's see if it works again we can try some movement so i will press a couple of times so we move to the enemy then i will press the right mouse button let's say twice which should also attack twice so let's do next round one movement second movement third and fourth and now in the console yep we see that we dealt zero damage because i didn't configure it in the script but it's definitely working and adding this command was really not hard we have just written few lines of code but we have made the code quite modular and versatile using the command pattern and it is also really nicely separating the logic as in one part we have the actual attack logic in the second part we have just the inputs and the stuff that should be triggering some of the logic then we have the commands we have the invoker and so on i think that i've already explained the main part of the command pattern which is how all of the different parts interact together and mainly how you can use it in your projects but if you are looking for a bit more code i have posted this project in the github where i have added some more functionality so right now we can see all of the commands queued up in the left side so as i'm moving it is adding all of these commands i've also added the undo functionality so i can press this button and just going to undo all of the commands so if i leave just those two i hit next round i will move up left and you can see it also added one more command which is for the enemy and the great thing about the enemy movement is that i really am just reusing the move command that we have so to the enemy i have added the character mover which really has all of the logic we need to move some character it doesn't have to be just player so we can use the same scripts for movement of the enemy and we don't have to write any additional code but obviously i had to write some logic to actually calculate the next position of the enemy so now you know that using command pattern you can make your project really modular and scalable because as you have seen as we have done the base system the invoker and all of the logic from now on we can really add as many commands as we want and it's not going to break anything the code is also nicely separated into the logic into the invoker into the client so now if i decide that i would want to make the movement of the player a bit more smooth as i said because right now it is just teleporting from one place to another all i have to do is just jump to the character mover that we have and just adjust the move function and inside of the script i don't really need to care about anything else and obviously the command pattern has many more benefits if you would work on some application you could store even list of all of the commands that you have already executed and if the user would press let's say ctrl z you could just revert these steps back or if you want to store the current state of the game you can just save queue of the commands or if you are working on some multiplayer game and you don't want to be sending a ton of data across the network you can just send in these different commands that you made across the network which will definitely be a lot more performant and this is just one of the many design patterns that there are so in the future you can be definitely looking forward to more tutorials about other design patterns as well if you are looking for some game developer friends or just seeking help feel free to take a look at my discord server if you want to support me financially and take a look at some of the extra content that i make you can go to my patreon i hope that this video was useful 
Tell me down in the comments what design pattern I should cover next. Don't forget to like, subscribe and I will see you in next videos. Bye!